So this is what uh, the map T does uh, to the, the limit state and to also the probability density function uh, in the new space. So let's uh, take a minute to study this uh, new uh, plot. So on the left we have the basic variable space x uh, and the limit state equation g of x equal to 0 uh, and the probability density function uh, of the axis. Uh, what you see are the, the contours. So they are basically cross sections. Uh, we can imagine uh, that the, the third axis coming out of the plane of your screen uh, is the, the density axis, the PDF axis. So this map T uh, brings everything to this new Y space. So as I said, two things happen. One is uh, the density function obviously moves and may take on a different shape uh, depending on the nature of the map. Uh, and also uh, the limit state looks very different or could look very different. Uh, its, its curvature may change. Uh, its location is most certainly to change uh, and obviously we should go for a new uh, symbol for the function. So let's say gx maps to h of y. So from now on we are going to see what uh, to do with h of y. So that uh, that is what uh, our uh, purpose is. So just uh, let's recap. So we want to find the probability content of this region R y. Uh, now that our limit state has been mapped to y uh, and we can find uh, by some means this probability which we are hoping would be a much simpler uh, and much more consistent exercise. So uh, then uh, there is a very key question here and this was one of the breakthroughs in early structural reliability is uh, what if this y, the, the space y is uh, the, the space of independent standard normal variables and let's give a special symbol for that uh, which would be uh, u. So uh, what if uh, and this is the answer to one of the two questions that I raised in the previous slide where do we map? What if we map into the space of independent uh, standard normal variables? Something very interesting happens in that case. Let's see what uh, the map looks like first. So uh, now u is our space of independent uh, standard normal variables uh, and um, from x we have mapped to u. Uh, the limit state is now h of u. Uh, that's all fine but uh, what is very interesting is uh, that uh, the PDF contours in this u space are concentric circles centered on the origin. So uh, that's actually very significant and we are going to take advantage of that uh, soon in the next few slides. Uh, so uh, this is what happens to the uh, probability of failure. Now we are uh, interested to find the, the probability content in the region defined uh, by RU, the uh, failed region that you clearly see on the right side uh, of your screen uh, and that is now a, a normal, a joint normal probability. Uh, and uh, why, why are the, uh, the, the PDF contours all concentric circles? Uh, that's uh, actually uh, quite easy to see. We, uh, we have seen uh, the uh, joint normal density and the standard bivariate normal because we are talking about uh, two, uh, two random variables here. So let's look at the bivariate as this example. So this is the standard bivariate normal PDF that you see uh, at the bottom of your screen, uh, x1 and x2 uh, are uh, two standard normal random variables with the correlation coefficient rho. Uh, so their means are each zero, their variances are each one. 
uh, and uh, you see that uh, the uh, expression in the exponential uh, is like an ellipse. So when rho becomes 0, then we have the, the standard independent bivariate normal and now the function in the exponential are just circular in nature. So they at different heights, they just give rise to circular contours and obviously are centered around 0. And that, as I said, is going to be very significant when we compute the failure probability that we have been talking about. From this point forward, we are going to stay confined to this independent standard normal space. So let's take stock of uh, how far we have come. Uh, we have mapped uh, the basic variables x onto this independent standard normal space u and hence we have mapped uh, the limit state function g of x onto another function h of u and pictorially this is what looks like in two dimensions. Uh, the equipdf contours are concentric circles around the origin and the failure region is clearly marked with dashed lines. So in FORM the objective is the problem statement is to minimize the norm of u subject to h equals 0. In other words, uh, we have to find the minimum distance point from the origin to the line h equals 0. And obviously this is an optimization problem and there are many many methods available to solve such an optimization problem. Uh, it's a constraint optimization problem. Uh, what we are going to do uh, later in this lecture and spend a good amount of time discussing this, we'll take up gradient based algorithms. Uh, they are uh, more classical in nature than more modern evolutionary algorithm based approaches, for example. Uh, but uh, these are not only very elegant, but they also uh, give some insights uh, into uh, the problem, which otherwise we would not get. So we will look at gradient based methods. And um, actually, uh, these methods were developed in a time when Monte Carlo simulations were really not available uh, to solve structural reliability problems. So uh, these approximate uh, geometry-based first-order reliability methods uh, were not only very useful, but they are also very elegant and mathematically very sound. So. Uh, Whichever method we use uh, to solve this optimization problem, let us say the answer is u star. So u star is a point on the limit state equation h equals 0, which is uh, by definition closest to the origin. So it has the minimum distance uh, from the origin and that is what I have noted uh, on the, uh, on the uh, plot. So uh, this minimum distance uh, is called the reliability index and it is closely related to the failure probability uh, or reliability that we are going to see uh, next. Uh, to, to do that, we must also actually mention that uh, this beta corresponds to a failure probability not of the uh, h equals 0 uh, limit state that you see or the region defined by h equals 0 but rather a hyperplane a line in this case of h0 of u uh, which is linearized which linearizes h of u at that minimum distance point. So there is an approximation and that linearization is actually uh, the name uh, that, that lends the name first order in the first order reliability method. So uh, this, this beta is the reliability index and it is the minimum distance. Now why is it the failure probability or why is it the reliability? Uh, for that uh, we have to make use of uh, or invoke one of the fundamental properties of this independent standard normal space and that is something I alluded to a uh, couple of slides ago is that the 
rotational symmetry of the independent standard normal space. So uh, let me see if I could just go back and forth uh, with this. Uh, what we are essentially doing here is we are turning the shaded region around the origin to now uh, make that line beta, that minimum uh, search distance, parallel to one of the axes, say u1. So it was like this, uh, located at the point u star, and suppose we turn everything, and because of the rotational symmetry, the probability content does not change. So uh, the same probability in this shaded region is identical to the probability in this shaded region. So uh, that is uh, a very useful and a very helpful, if it's a very simplifying uh, property of, of this space. So once more, uh, this is where we were. Uh, this was my minimum distance point and the probability content of that shaded region is identical to the probability content of this shaded region or the probability content behind the linearized uh, blue line is the same as that in this linearized blue line. So now obviously we can see uh, clearly uh, the problem is defined as the probability that u is uh, u1 is greater than beta. Uh, that region is just a single uh, one-dimensional uh, normal CDF that we need to evaluate and that's why uh, because of this rotational symmetry of the standard normal space, uh, the failure probability simply becomes the evaluation of a one-dimensional normal probability uh, provided we can find that minimum distance point and the minimum distance. Obviously, this is an approximation as I already said. It is the probability uh, corresponding to that linearized, that blue line that we had before. Again, going back, uh, the it's H0 uh, that uh, gives the uh, modified failure region and that has an exact failure probability given by beta. So uh, to put everything together, uh, our solution is U star, our reliability index is beta and our failure probability is phi of minus beta because we are looking at a region away from the origin uh, greater than beta. So it's phi of minus beta, that's the failure probability and the approximately equal sign is due to the fact that uh, we have linearized a nonlinear uh, function h. So uh, if h was equal to h naught, then that failure probability would be exact, but it's not in general. So that's where one of the approximations come from. Uh, it's also quite helpful uh, to define the direction cosines, uh, which you see on the screen, and they are also known as uh, the sensitivity uh, of each variable u, ui. Basically, what that tells you is uh, what is the change in reliability index or reliability uh, for a, an incremental change in that particular ui. So alpha i measures that. Larger is alpha, the greater is the contribution of that random variable uh, to the reliability. You can map it back to x and find out which are uh, the most important uh, random variables in the physical space of basic variables contributing to failure. Now it may have struck you that uh, this problem setup uh, does not differentiate whether uh, the failure region is on the far side of h equals 0 or the near side. Uh, in other words, uh, is uh, the origin contained in the failure region or not? Obviously, the origin being part of the failure region is uh, it signifies very low reliability, uh, something less than even half, which is not something we typically encounter in structural reliability. But if you have to be completely accurate, uh, then we have to 
uh, also evaluate that fact whether uh, the uh, the origin is part of the failure region or not so uh, if you like for uh, the purpose of completeness we uh, we should define the failure probability as uh, phi of minus beta times the sign of h at the origin so if the sign is positive then it's what we have been talking about if the sign happens to be negative which means origin is in failure then the failure probability becomes phi of beta and if beta is a large enough number then failure probability is going to be very high in any case it's obviously going to be uh, greater than half because beta is a distance so it can never be negative